Hello everyone, welcome back to the PMFIS Current Affairs Test Series. My name is Ashish Malik and this is your third part of the Test 5 discussion. And in this particular video, we will be taking up the next 20 questions that is from 41 to 60. And I hope so far you have also checked out the PMFIS Test Series. It is now available at a very special price of 499. And in this, we are going to give you 1000 high quality MCQs. Do check it out, it's a limited time offer. The link is given in description guys. So the question number 41, which was asked with respect to the Swamitva scheme. Very important question, very uh, relevant for your upcoming exam. But to solve this question, first of all, you are supposed to be aware with respect to the scheme because such questions are very fact-based fact -based, uh, questions. And first, and many, many ways, uh, you know, uh, the questions can be solved if you are aware about the full form of such schemes. Sometimes the, the question becomes really easy if you are aware about the full forms. Talking about the Swamitva first, first it stands for the survey of the villages Abadi and mapping with improvised technology in the village area. That is the full form of Swamitva. This is a very recent uh, scheme which was launched in 2021 and that was launched on the National Panchayati Raj Day which is 24th April. Now this again is a very important information uh, that can be used for your exam. Now, please understand with respect to the Swamitva scheme, number one, it's a central sector scheme. Central sector means even the funding is to be contributed by center plus the states. And number two, oh, sorry, uh, it's a central sector scheme. So the funding is entirely going to be by the center. Central sector means 100% uh, funding to be given by the center itself. If it would have been a center sponsored scheme, then the state contribution would have come to the play. Now, Ministry. Second most important thing about any scheme is the ministry. This Swamitva that talks about the mapping, uh, you know, it, it is going to be under Ministry of Panchayati Raj. So please remember two very, very important crucial points. And number three, it provides record of rights, especially of the village household owners. Now, if you look at the question, you will understand the very first points are wrong state away. It is not sponsored, it is central sector scheme and the ministry is also wrong which is now ministry of Panchayati Raj. So straight away the two are wrong. Third statement is fine. It is it provide us the record of the rights to the village household owner fine. And other than that Swamitva scheme has many other aims and one such aim is establishing clear ownership of the property in the rural inhabited areas that is the core aim of Swamitva scheme. So here clearly the answer is going to be B, only two are correct. A level is medium, but uh, I think this question uh, you can solve in such a way because I'm talking about, but see, if I have to, uh, you know, I, I have to talk about the ownership of the property that is to be done in a uniform manner, right? And to maintain that uniformity, the central government has to take charge in their own hands. So cannot be a sponsored scheme because if the state government is to be included, the things would become really complex because uh, with the funding and all. So such kind of uh, uh, schemes are mostly going to be central sponsored scheme. I know that when it comes to the properties of the uh, rural areas, the ownership of the properties are not one of the domains of the rural development. Rural development has other developmental works. Basically, all these ownership claims and all are to be dealt by the Panchayati Raj Ministry. So, utilizing that two uh, things, I, we could have straight away eliminated the first and second. And yeah, third, fourth could be done. So, medium question, but I think can be attempted easily by eliminating other options. So, what, what other things, um, uh, you know, this particular Swamitva scheme does? So, please remember, other than establishing clear ownership properties, this particular scheme, though it is implemented by the Ministry of Panchayati Raj, but please remember extra information. To do that, it of course has to take support of the state revenue departments, state Panchayati Raj departments, even Survey of India contributes in the scheme. But please understand, the funding is exclusively going to be by the central government. Question number two was with respect to the endosulfan. Endosulfan we already have discussed in the last video if you remember 
where I, I mentioned it is one of the POP, the Persistent Organic Pollutants, banned under the Stockholm uh, Convention, if you guys remember, right? Okay, now since we just have mentioned this point, so yes, Stockholm Convention, which is on POPs, placed a global ban on the manufacture and the use of endosulfurane, and they have banned it in way back in 2011. In fact, in India, the Supreme Court of India also banned endosulfan in 2011 itself the the time the moment it was banned globally so third statement is absolutely correct but please remember the question is asking us which which statement is not correct guys okay so this statement is correct endosulfan yes it is it is one of that kind of pesticide which we used very com which, which we used to use not right now but it was used in agriculture especially uh, as a as a medium of controlling the pest and for also controlling the diseases on the crop. It was very much into the culture that time. And why it got banned? Because it is highly toxic chemical. It, it's one of the POPs and linked to severe health problems that we have. Uh, it associates itself with bioaccumulation and biomagnification as well. So all three are correct. So which is not correct? None of the above. Very easy question, simple question. Endosulfan information we already have done so many times um, and since it's a part of the Stockholm Convention make make it absolutely important for your UPSC exam. Question number 43 was with respect to the Digital India Land Record Modernization Program. I mean look at the name. The name says a lot of things. Okay, I'm going to modernize my land records in a digital format. Now when you when you when you think about the digital records of the of the land i know that it is going to be department of land resources but please understand in under which ministry land resources is going to work we just have discussed right well department of the land resources is it the ministry of panchayati raj be careful about the ministries all the time first let's understand and then we'll come back so number 1 the first statement uh, talking about this so called Digital India Land Record Modernization Program. First thing you have to remember, it is a central sector scheme. Again, the funding, 100% funding to be done by the central government. Please, just for a record, this right now, Digital India Land Record Modernization used to be known by the name National Land Record Modernization Program. Now, this scheme has been renamed as Digital India Land Record Modernization. This Department of Land Resources, that is the nodal agency for the implementation of the program, actually works under Ministry of Rural Development. So, very important guys, you just have learned with me the Swamitva scheme. So, when it comes to Swamitva, always compare it with the Digital India Record Modernization. These two schemes to be prepared simultaneously because that scheme was under Ministry of Panchayati Raj. Understand? So, if, if the, these are the kind of schemes and both are central sector scheme, by the way, but both ministries are different. So always try to compare because now in that case, you are never ever going to forget if you prepare things by comparing them. <clears throat> As the name says, this di uh, digital land modernization program, it is developed, it, it is designed to develop a modern, comprehensive and very transparent land record management system in India and for that purpose this the one of the objective of this scheme is to develop integrated land information management system called as ILIMS. Now how it is going to be done? How this scheme is going to integrate land information? How we are going to make it as a, as a part of digital India? There are many components of this program for example computerization of the land records, computerization of the registration process the digitization of the cadastral maps, even it is going to be linked with the right of record, modern record rooms would be prepared and finally integration of the registration with the land record. So by following all these components, the, we are going to, uh, you know, we are going to make the things very modernized. Now, now you have the question in front of you, you have learned everything. So yes, the third statement is correct. But again, the second statement is not correct, given the ministry is wrong here. And it is not central sponsored, it is central sector scheme. So majorly 
all the land record based uh, schemes that you have just learnt with me that come that uh, center uh, is giving the priority on them so one to incorrect the answer is supposed to be only one i would say this particular question yes it was uh, it was a medium kind of question uh, it is not going to be attempted so easily so either you have to risk it the risk can be taken by at least you can eliminate uh, the first and the second one maybe third can give you a little bit of trouble but understand if you if you are able to figure out the first second statements as incorrect if you know about the land resources departments then things become very easy because ultimately digital india land modernization has a direct connection with the third statement because ultimately if i am going to digitize my land management land record i am obviously going to integrate that as a one information portal right so third still can be guessed easily so i think you can risk it with some logic logical sense and some work of elimination guys that brings us to the question number 44 very straight forward question so on on one hand very typical upsc question on one hand you have the list of the national waterways nw1234 and then you have the list on which particular river systems we are go, we are having it okay now for that again guys you are you are supposed to be very very good with your map based knowledge um see when it comes to inland waterways you should be first understand the concept of inland waterways when we are utilizing our water bodies within our boundary we are utilizing it for the transportation purpose as a main means of communication transportation then we are utilizing those navigable water bodies as inland waterways the way we have our roadways and railways so waterways becomes a means of transport that to efficiently india has a huge potential in india there is a potential of approximately 14500 km of the navigable waterways are there we are blessed to have that many water bodies that many rivers in india but despite this fact india is still having a under utilized potential of the inland waterways with only 2% of india's total share in transportation is done by the inland waterways of course there is a lot to be done in fact to fully utilize the inland waterways plan in india uh, ministry of shipping has made a you know a blueprint where we are going to create 111 new waterways in our country already there are few and of course we must do that look at look at bangladesh bangladesh is still utilizing 35% of the potential india is having only 2% potential utilization of the inland waters of course so we are going in future we are going to make it and it is always cheaper guys if you compare the uh, cost no uh, the inland waterways are always going to be cheaper so if let's say uh, if you are going by road if roadways are is taking uh, uh, the cost is 1 rupee let's say the railway uh, cost is going to be 0.5 rupee so uh, the waterways are going to be 1/4 going to be uh, 25 paisa so that is that, that this comparison i am going to uh, make you understand that they are really cheap and can so save a lot of money when it comes to the transportation cost but, but of course waterways are utilized for the long distances in india right now there are some waterways which are already operational and you have all the list in front of you you think of national waterway 1 this is the longest waterway that we have right from uh, uh, you know joining ganga bhagirathi right from allahabad it connects all the way to haldia so that this is your national waterway 1 this you can see entire and as the name says it is over ganga nadi um, then you have national waterway 2 then for that you have to go to brahmaputra national waterway 2 is this you can say from from sadia to dhubri this is your national waterway 2 national waterway 3 you have to go to down south so you have a western coast canal uh, uh, you know this particular patch is the national waterway 3 national waterway 4 is on, on the river krishna so there are so many waterways which are already there which are being planned which are being constructed you have this entire there are 13 national waterways which are in operation right now and the target is to create 111 such so my suggestion is uh, right now please stop the video and please have a look on all these uh, uh, at least at least 13 waterways and just don't stop there 
try to make at least these waterways on the political map of India, it is going to be really helpful for you in your exam. So if you, we come to the question now, we have, uh, we have figured out that yes, for uh, the National Waterway 2, we really have to go to Brahmaputra River. National Waterway 3 was in the, uh, you know, on the Chamkara uh, Canal. Waterway 4 was not on Tapi, it was on the river Krishna. So easily we can figure out, but again, this question was difficult because it's absolutely factual. Nothing much to eliminate in this question. So it was a tough one. Uh, you can take a risk if you if you have read this map, if you are still confident, at least you know 3 out of 4, you can still take a risk. But otherwise, fact based, no scope of guessing, you can you should not take the risk and you can skip uh, if you are not sure, if you have not read. But, but this particular topic, I would suggest uh, read it and read it on the map. If you do that, it, it is going to be a cake, cake walk for you in your upcoming exam. So here, the three are wrong answer is going to be only one pair. Very important. And you have the details in front of you. You can just check it out from the PDF. Next question is very interesting question. It is talking about the Eklavya model residential schools. We have many types of school in India. One such type is Eklavya model schools. We know that this particular school, it actually targets the scheduled tribe, the tribal population um, of India of India. So these schools are going to actually target the tribal children. When this much is clear that Eklavya school is about the tribal population and tribal children of India. So definitely whenever there is anything related to tribes, always remember it is going to be Ministry of Tribal Affairs. Ministry of Education sounds correct here and many of you, I'm sure you must have made this mistake considering school Ministry of Education looks correct, but that is not. The focus is Eklavya. Who was Ek Eklavya? Eklavya, you, you must have read the Mahabharata, right? In Mahabharata, we have seen uh, this one uh, tribal kid, Eklavya, who was, who was uh, supposedly or allegedly even better archer than Arjuna. And uh, uh, he considered Dronacharya as his guru and uh, setting up his, uh, you know, uh, his idol in front of him. He practiced, practiced and practiced and he even became a, a great archer at the time. But as a Guru Dakshina, uh, Dronacharya asked for his thumb uh, so that uh, nobody could challenge the legacy and the greatness of Arjuna. Point is, Eklavya has a legacy and especially legacy of the tribal population, right? So a lot of hints are there. So clearly first cannot be the right answer. It has to be Ministry of Tribal Affairs. Now second interesting point. Now, can non-scheduled tribal children be permitted in this? Of course, of course it can be. There is a limit like only up to 10% of the total seats. Even non-scheduled tribe people can still go to the Eklavya school. But yes, 90% seats are reserved for the, for the tribal children. That is very, very important. You have, you have the two uh, information in front of you, right? This scheme is a very old scheme. Started way back in 1997-98. And now you have the ministry in front of you as well. Okay, so um, the aim, if you look at the aim, why these schools were started to provide quality education to scheduled tribes, even the PVTG students, and also enabling them access the best opportunities in the education and bring them at par with any other general population. That's why the scheme was started. And very interestingly, this Ministry of Tribal Affairs also established a national education society for the tribal students called NEST, which is a which is an autonomous organization to oversee the uh, you know the the working of the EMRS na nationwide these Eklavya schools to monitor their functioning the way they are doing their work. So we have a national education society for the tribal student as well, again to ensure high quality education and safe environment for the children of tribal people. So yes, here in this case. Uh, except for the first statement, second, third are correct. And uh, I think this question was a medium one, but I'm sure you could have attempted it easily. See, there are no rigid schemes in India. Only these students are allowed, these are not allowed. Such kind of, you know, Indian education is not that rigid uh, kind of thing, right? So, yeah, uh, that makes us to move to the next question number 
46. Now very straightforward question but very confusing also. I would say this question was a tough one. Why? Please look at the question. The question says the women for water and water for women campaign launched by which of the following? Very confusing. Why? Now you will start looking for water and women. Water and women, right? Many of you think it is women and child development but that is not the right answer. Then you will start for, uh, focusing on water. Must be Ministry of Jal Shakti but that is also not the case. Then okay fine if these two are not the case then you will think because I told you once that you know many of the water management schemes are going to be uh, you know under the rural development also but that is also not the case. So the real answer is actually D it is Ministry of Housing and Urban Affairs. So all the guesswork is going to fail in this question. Only your knowledge is going to be at play. So this question was a tough one. Why? Because it's a tricky question. And I think 90% students are going to give a wrong answer for this. You, you can tell me in the comment if your answer was correct or not. If you also thought the way um, I thought or I would have approached it, I'm sure uh, you understand why I'm pinpointing how the students are going to guess. Right answer is going to be D. So it was a tough one. You can take a risk if you want, but uh, don't attempt it if you do not know the right answer in this case because very confusing. Talking a little bit more on the program guys, very important program. So um, the, min, the Union Urban Affairs Ministry started this initiative called Women for Water and Water for Women and that was started under the flagship scheme called the Amrut where we are transforming 500 cities of India and this particular Women for Water, Water for Women uh, scheme initiative was started in partnership with the National Urban Livelihood Mission and also Odisha Urban Academy. So you never know, you may have a question where they would be asking about the ministries and the other partners. So do you do read about the other partners as well. Ultimately, from this initiative, we are trying to provide a platform for inclusion in the water governance in our country. These, this particular initiative is going to give the first hand knowledge about the water treatment process to uh, through the through the visit of the water treatment plants and in the respective cities so that's how we are trying to transform the water management but remember the ministry ministry is housing affair for it then you have another interesting question and very tricky one again amazon india signed memorandum of understanding with which organization to extend amazon Wow, wow stands for Women of the World Initiative. So one thing is clear, Amazon India, this uh, so-called Women of the World, wow initiative belongs to Amazon India. But again, then it, it, it has signed memorandum of understanding. Now again, you will think, oh, this is about women. So you will, the first guess is going to be National Commission for Women, but that is not the right answer. Probably can be Women India Trust, not the right answer again. Self-employed women, not at all. So very, very tricky, not just tricky, very, very tricky question because our mind is going to guess at, at the last way we can think about the last one. The, the answer is B actually in this case. Then for that purpose, you first need to know what this WOW initiative is all about. What is this WOW initiative? So this question again, very tough. Please risk it only if you have that margin of the cutoff otherwise very very careful because this question is again a tricky one 99 percent chances are if you do the guesswork you are going to go or you are going to make a mistake and you are going to be in a uh, you know problematic situation so amazon india started this so-called wow along with the ai cte which is all india council for technical education so now you understand oh this scheme, Women of the World, has something to do with the education. Basically, Amazon Wow is a networking platform for all the women engineering students in India that connects them to the Amazon leaders, recruiters and broader Amazon communities. The objective behind the Wow scheme is to foster optimizing resource utilization upskilling promoting the tech career among the women especially 
in STEM. STEM stands for Science, Technology, Engineering, Mathematics because you know in India we are really suffering from less percentage or less proportion of the women into the STEM services and we have seen there's a huge dropout especially in terms of higher studies when it comes to STEM uh, in the women community. So to encourage women to start their careers in all these fields Amazon WOW has been conceptualized. Okay, this is really interesting guys. And again, this scheme is open to any women student who is currently pursuing a four year B.Tech or B degree or a two year MCA M.Tech program for five year dual degree, like all the options are available. So all you have to do, you have to make sure that you don't get this question wrong. It's a tricky one. So be very, very careful. Next question is a very fact based, straightforward question talking about the Lokur committee. What Lokur committee is associated with? It is not criminalization of politics, not disaster financial reforms, not methodological computer aspects of the estimation of the poor in India, not at all. Lokur committee is about the first one. It look into the criteria for defining the scheduled tribes. Who are scheduled tribes in India? That is the way the all the criteria are defined by this committee. Whom should we consider or give the tag of an ST? Again, this question, I would say it was a, it was a tough one because we don't really have a scope of the, uh, of the guesswork. So many questions are very fact based in this segment. So again, uh, the things are at risk. Okay. The no scope. So be very careful if you can skip or if you don't have to skip. So be careful about the local committee, giving you a little bit more information guys in 1965 local committee set up the criteria like how we are going to include or not include any community into the ST list and why this question is so important you see because in India there are so many communities which are actually demanding them to be registered as ST category list and given these so many demands from various even today and and it is so much so many times in the news that's why you you should you're supposed to know the background of the of this particular list. So Registrar General of India still uses the same criteria which was set by the Lokur committee while uh, prescribing or including any community into the ST list. Which are those criteria as per Lokur committee? Uh, if that community has primitive traits, if it is still having distinctive culture, geographical isolation is one of the barriers behind their development. If, they are back, if their backwardness is quite prominent because of any other of the above factors or if they, are, they have a shyness in the contacting with the community at large and that is probably the reason for their isolation. It could be anything. If any of the things applies to any community, then they are likely and eligible to be classified into the uh, ST list in India. Next question 49 is talking about the stubble management mechanism. But the key word is in situ. In situ means at its own place. At its own place. I'm not going to cut or remove my stubble and giving it to other person, a third party. Then they will take care of that at their own places. No. In situ means on my farm itself. I'm going to manage my stubble, that residue, that crop residue that we have. So I'm going to manage that crop residue in the farm itself not going to cut and give it to somewhere, somebody else. So here are the three mechanisms. We have happy seeder, bio decomposer and the uh, baller machine. So these three are there. So which of them are all of them? Like, please understand all of them are used for st stubble management. But the question is, which of them are in situ? So happy seeder is an in situ mechanism. Bio decomposer is uh, uh, the PUSA. Bio decomposer is one of the in situ mechanism. Baller machine is not in situ. It is actually ex situ mechanism where the farmer gives their stubble to the third party and they are going to convert that uh, uh, crop residue into some utilizable form uh, like in terms of ballers and those balls ball, uh, uh, can be used for as a fuel in some of the industries, right? So that is, that is something that can be done. In fact, many suggest that these stubbles, uh, they should be burnt, uh, uh, you know, in place of the coal. Many people say under the baller machine, it says, yes, 
all the all that highly compressed biomasses of the stubble can be utilized as a fuel of the thermal power plants as well even bet, uh, at least it is better than the coal that we currently are using right so one two are correct so yes uh, if you eliminate option number 3 then you get you are going to get option number a as the one uh, this question was a medium one i think very uh, simple to attempt because very clearly we read about the stubble man and stubble management is very very important topic as well it comes into news for many many reasons right so yeah uh, you know that there is a problem normally very traditionally farmers what they used to do they used to burn that stubble whenever the stubble burning take place of course it, it it causes big level of air pollution not just at its place but also like the entire delhi uh, uh, you know delhi ncr region has an effect uh, in terms of visibility there are there is an increased air pollution in nearby urban places example is delhi for all the air pollution that is generated by stubble burning from the farmers of punjab haryana and even the western up right now to basically stop this practice this is very uh, non ecological practice and something which is responsible for huge air pollution so to you know to provide an alternative we have in situ ex situ environment friendly method under the happy cedar or you can call as super cedar under this particular mechanism agri implements used for direct seed sowing without the prior tillage this is one way uh, the way i can stop my stubble uh, in the in the future biodecomposers again they are like a spray biodecomposers are nothing but kind of spray when which when sprayed on the uh, on the stubble after some time the stubble is going to get decayed and going to get merged in the soil then x2 i told you about the bollards which is nothing but the compressed uh, agricultural residue into manageable transportable balls next question is something we all have in our kitchen but are we aware about the fact yes i'm talking about the chickpea most of us we eat chickpea at least uh, at least once a week in some form or the other right chickpea which is very famously known as bengal gram do you know that this is annual legume plant but that is cultivated in kharif no chickpea is not a kharif season crop it's a a rabi season crop and do you know that this particular chickpea it is not native to india the origin of the chickpea was actually in the mediterranean climate from there from mediterranean climate it came to west asia from west asia it came to south asia and now today india is the largest chickpea producer india alone is producing nearly 50% of the total pulse production in india 50% of that pulse production is by the chickpea only okay now very interestingly there is one super drought tolerant variety and that is why it, this question is in news so have you heard of the advika advika is basically it's a new superior drought tolerant climate smart climate resilient variety of the chickpea that we have developed and that is being released recently for the commercial utilization so advika if you never know you may have a separate question on advika as well it is super superior drought tolerant and climate smart variety of the chickpea that is be that is being used okay so first is wrong so just by eliminating my option number 1 because i know that chickpea uh, uh, is, is something okay now best way to remember so chickpea you have to remember with wheat chickpea remember with the wheat okay both are connected so of course it's going to be the rabi season so eliminate number 1 i am going to get my answer very easily as option 2 and 3 even if i am not aware one simple information and utilizing the elimination technique gave me this answer though this question was a medium one but now i am able to attempt it without any problem because i am able to eliminate i know this for sure for 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 solving the mcqs you don't really have to be genius you really do not have to uh, know everything but at least you should be smart enough to eliminate the wrong information or best utilizing your uh, knowledge that you have so that is the game and please remember chickpea is very important in terms of nutritional security not just the food security but nutritional security why because chickpea are a great source of 
fiber protein iron phosphorus and folic acid this is important like i told you guys india largest chickpea producer 50% of the total pulse production in india is is 50% uh, share is of the chickpea itself which states grow the chickpea can be another important question for the mcq so yes we have the leading state as maharashtra mp rajasthan gujarat and up these are the five most prominent state contributing maximum in the chickpea production in india so i think this uh, statement is all clear to all of you question number 51 was with respect to the transgender community now this is very interesting and important uh, uh, you know question because very specifically talks about the uh, recent transgender person act 2019 and it also talks about a very famous case called nalsa versus of union of india case so for both you at least have to be aware you should be fully aware about the facts of this question first learn them then we'll go back so this uh, this uh, transgender person protection of the right act 2019 actually changed the perspective and the opportunities for transgender forever this was a very revolutionary very revolutionary act for the transgender community and they have welcomed it like anything because because for the first time this bill clearly defined who exactly a transgender person is because before that there was no law defining transgender so comprehensively as it was done by this particular act as per the act transgender person can be those whose gender does not match with gender assigned at birth means that is those people whose gender identity does not conform to their biological sex also include the trans men trans women also include the person with intersex variations also include the gender queers and also person with socio cultural identities as kinner or uh, also called as hijra so you see the look at the comprehension look at the look at the landscape look at the broad uh, definition and it is very important that at least now you have a definition for the transgender if you have a definition it becomes easy for the policy making now you can you can make a comprehensive policy for the welfare of the people as well and when it comes to transgender always remember this case nalsa versus union of india case 2014 where supreme court clearly said that a person has a right and autonomy to decide their own gender means very clearly the supreme court said self perception of identity in transgender should be treated as socially economically backward classes and all the transgender people now under this definition are going to get the benefits which are given to the to the other members of socially economically backward classes and that's why i'm telling you this definition is very very comprehensive this is very very uh, revolutionary for the transgender people so here yes both statements are absolutely correct my answer is going to be c question was a bit medium one but very straightforward very easy statement guys a uh, very uh, easily you can attempt the answer for that right okay but of course of course you have to be careful with in terms of the ears because both statements in involves the ears so you really have to be careful because when upsc ask you with respect to the ears they can trick you any time so be very careful next question is very simple it talk it talks about the air quality index i think this is one of the most famous uh, tool that we use for monitoring the air quality and it is given uh, five uh, you know components are given and i have to tell which of them are considered or which of them are monitored under the A aqi calculation you can say that first let's get to the details of the aqi so um, in india uh, this indicator aqi is used to measure the quality of the air at a specific location and based on that uh, aqi was launched way back in 2014 and it its outline was very simple one number one color and one description and that's why under the air quality index there are six type of air qualities which were classified but again there are so many pollutants but which are the major the main uh, the core uh, pollutants which are measured by the air quality index this these eight major pollutants include uh, the two types of particulate matter 10 and 2.5 then you have nitrogen dioxide sulfur dioxide ammonia lead ozone 
वेरी वेरी केयरफुल कार्बन मोनोक्साइड डोंट इंक्लूड कार्बन डाइऑक्साइड कार्बन डाइऑक्साइड इज नॉट अ पल्यूटेंट इट इज अ ग्लोबल ग्रीन हाउस गैस मोनोक्साइड इज कंसिडर्ड एज अ पल्यूटेंट अंडर दिस एंड ओवरऑल हु हैज डेवलप्ड द ए क्यू आई वेल ए क्यू आई इज डेवलप्ड बाय द सेंट्रल पोल्यूशन कंट्रोल बोर्ड दिस स्टेटमेंट इज इज ऑल्सो वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट राइट नाउ यू कैन सी वेरी इजिली विच आर नॉट द पार्ट ऑफ ए क्यू आई डाइऑक्साइड इज नॉट द पार्ट बेनजीन इज ऑल्सो नॉट द पार्ट सो मोनोक्साइड लेड एंड अमोनिया सो ओनली थ्री इज द राइट आंसर एंड दिस क्वेश्चन वॉज वेरी इजी वेरी सिंपल स्टेट फॉर्वर्ड एंड ए क्यू आई इज क्वाइट फेमस वी ऑल चेक ओके माई क्वेश्चन सप्लीमेंट्री क्वेश्चन फॉर यू कैन यू टेल मी विच आर द सिक्स टाइप्स ऑफ द एयर क्वालिटी आई जस्ट हैव मैंशन दैट देर आर सिक्स टाइप्स ऑफ एयर क्वालिटी विच इज मैंशन अंडर द ए क्यू आई एंड कैन यू ऑल्सो टेल मी एट विच पर्टिकुलर लेवल वॉट एट वट लेवल ऑफ एयर क्वालिटी द ग्रेडेड एक्शन प्लान the grab the graded action plan the graded action plan uh, kicks in in delhi ncr region because there is a particular level of air quality after which the uh, the uh, this graded action plan starts to control the air pollution in delhi if you know the answer tell me in the comment section box i'm looking forward for the answer guys okay now that takes us to the next question 53 very simple question again talks about the green crackers okay fine as the name says the green cracker first thing that should come to my mind oh they are supposed to be or and they are going to be eco friendly environment friendly right but please understand crackers are still crackers can i say the green crackers don't cause any emission or they are considered as a very safe replacement for traditional of course not crackers are still crackers of course the the level the comparison if you compare the two of course green cracker are going to you know have a low sound low emission but saying that they don't cause any emission is is too unrealistic situation right so clearly two is not going to be my answer number 1 it says barium nitrate one of the major constituents of the green cracker to make them less dangerous not at all barium nitrate is probably the most dangerous thing that is used in traditional crackers green cracker utilizes potassium nitrate not the barium nitrate so both statements are wrong answer is going to be d neither one nor two very easy simply you can you at least by knowing these two you can give the answer so talking little bit more about the green crackers yes Uh, of course green crackers are designed as a as a better alternative but not a safe alternative so far so good wali baat hai that it still has uh, you know uh, it it is based on low thermite content it 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 uh, uh, has a minimum uses of the aluminum it does not contain barium compound at all because bariums are dangerous they are toxic you know adding lots of air and noise pollution so green crackers replace that barium compound with the potassium compounds but of course of course they still cannot be called as a zero emission cracker no uh they are going to you know cause 30% less less emissions they are going to have a lo lower noise but can't say complete replacement or safe replacement that is too unrealistic okay can you tell me uh okay like chalo fine i'll tell you one interesting thing there are three very famous green crackers one is called swas one is called star and another one is called uh, swas star and there was one more safal so these three are the these three are the green crackers who can tell me in the comment box the full form of these three green crackers tell me in the comment box if you know the full form so that you can learn a little bit more about the green crackers okay now moving ahead moving forward with the next question 54 this question is about the protection of the women from domestic violence act 2005 which statement do you think is the correct one now very very interesting and important question so you see uh, this particular act domestic violence act of 2005 it actually provides protection compensation and right to residence 
in the shared household to all the aggrieved person specifically the women now this act is so important because in the act there is a clear definition that who is an aggrieved person it can be any women in a domestic relationship who has experienced domestic violence that means this domestic relationship term can include the married women mother daughter sisters yes so you you can see the definition is quite broad in this particular case now interestingly this act also defines shared household at a place where women lives or any stage that has lived a domestic relationship either single or along with the husband now interestingly this particular domestic act of 2005 very broadly includes the four type of the abuses not just the physical one but also includes economical verbal emotional and sexual violence as well so again this act has very broad scope in terms of giving the two things right another interesting thing you guys are quite aware that under the ipc indian penal code there is there is a, a one exemption uh, in section 7375 section 375 that talks about the rape right under under the section 375 there is one particular exemption and that exemption is that uh, rape uh, crime is not going to be applied on the husband even if it is a case of marital rape it is very difficult to prove so that's why uh, the ipc the uh, the the husband cannot be convicted as a rapist of uh, his wife but this particular act actually recognizes sexual violence within the confines of marriage as well means that means pd uh, this uh, uh, prevention of domestic violence act actually help those women who are asking for protection uh, uh, from their husband as well ipc is silent on that but at least this is this looks really progressive it also taking cases of the marital rape and let me tell you marital rape is probably one of the most the brutal kind of exploitation that we can think of right okay so yeah in this case all the three statements are correct um, i know this question was little bit tough you can say it was a tough one but look at the look at the options options are very simple and everything connects very easily with the act itself so sometimes you can use your common sense and you can think okay fine this looks exactly the purpose so you because you you have read so many things you are still in a position to connect the facts and by doing so you are you are going to get the answer uh, as c so tough question but i think you all could have attempted it based on the understanding of the statements the statements the option itself going to help you understand that right okay now next question is the smoke tower we know what is a smoke smoke is nothing but smoke plus fog right so what could be a smoke tower smoke tower is actually uh, let's say it's smoke tower is going to be any installation that is going to be anti smoke that that's that's the sole purpose that should come to our mind no like something to stop the smoke something to to control to check the smoke right okay now the question says which are the likely benefits of the smoke towers we'll come back on we'll come back on on to the question first understand what a smoke tower is very interestingly smoke tower is a large scale air purification device that is responsible for reducing the pollution how exactly it does that please look at this look at the smoke tower which is in front of you the process is very simple guys from one end the polluted air is going inside and this whole smoke tower is going to filter using lots of filters the filtered air the clean air is going to come out that is a very simple process of a smoke tower okay and it is capable of producing 1000 cubic meter of fresh air per second that is a kind of capacity that this uh, smoke tower has now okay fine so this much is okay talking about the benefits it has many benefits many benefits as in it is going to give very quick respite quick relief from the severe air pollution you remember in delhi 
at many places smoke towers were utilized real time monitoring air pollution can be done utilizing the smoke tower uh, it also complements other air control measures so it it is not it i can't say that this is going to be a one stop solution but yes it does contribute a lot for other methods as well right but there are limitation at the same place the the major limitation of the smoke tower and why it cannot be a one stop solution because there is a limited coverage area so typically the smoke tower typically uh, you know cleans only within a certain radius like only few hundred kilometers around few hundred meters around it not even kilometer a few hundred meters that is one bigger problem that we have with respect to the smoke towers plus the installation maintenance cost are very high and also this is effective only for a certain pollutants majorly it is efficient for removing the particulate matter but what about the other one what about carbon monoxide sulfur dioxide nitrogen dioxide all the other pollutants are not that effectively removed particulate matters are quite effectively removed so again it has a limited effectiveness and this is a temporary solution it does not address the root cause of the pollution uh, it has a low operational capacity and again it also has potential environmental impact because ultimately smoke tower also consumes lot of energy there is lot of waste generation from the smoke tower and again lot of noise pollution that it does so what about that how about that cost so now if you go back if you look at the question it says likely benefits of the smoke tower are they going to co coverage uh, cover high area no they are going to cover low area if this much is clear eliminate the option now i have only these two options fine high operational capacity no they have a low operational capacity now okay fine okay look at this forget about the fifth one first look at this real time monitoring air pollution yes quick respite from the severe air pollution yes at least i am clear with that is it effective against all major pollutant no only very limited pollutants like pm and all so eliminate option number 3 as well when i eliminate option 3 i am only left with 2 and 4 directly eliminating number 5 from the from the list itself so yes this question was a was a medium uh, question but again this could could be taken a risk because at least we know the purpose if you know the purpose of the smoke tar you can still uh, you know uh, you are still able to guess and eliminate some of the options here so answer here is to be b guys important question do read about air pollution do read about other kind of pollution pollution is going to be very important topic for your upcoming prelims question number 56 talks about the conving montreal global biodiversity framework so if you have to take one of my advice i would say this there is going to be 100% question on this framework because this is the latest framework that is talking about biodiversity and this is absolutely important so must must read i mean i am going to give it a star mark must prepare topic so why it was in news first understand and then we'll come back to the question so this coming montreal uh, global biodiversity framework very recently adopted in the 15th cop conference of the party to the un convention on biodiversity which is very simply called as cbd like i am sure you all have are following the cop of the unfccc don't get confused united nation framework climate uh, convention on climate change has a different cop for that cop 28 took place recently but this is about the cbd even cbd has its own conference of party and uh, this uh, uh, the coming montreal framework is the result of the 15th uh, cop that that happened very recently very interestingly this framework set some goals and targets for protecting the biodiversity and also halting the loss which is hap which is happening at a very rapid pace interestingly though this framework has four goals that are to be achieved by till 2050 and 23 targets to be achieved till 2030 dekho very interestingly normally what what happens the goal and target year are the same but here this is special the goal target is longer 2050 but targets are to be achieved till 2030 that makes this very very important for the exam plus this is not a legal binding treaty 
biodiversity is something which is still uh, very much done by the countries on a voluntary basis so yeah it is also not legally binding talking about the four goals very important goals that this framework is going to target it talks about ecosystem maintenance it talks about how we can preserve the genetic diversity it talks about how human induced extinctions of the biodiversities can be prevented it talks about biodiversity to be used in a very sustainable manner it talks about fair equitable sharing of the monetary non monetary benefits from genetic resources and again it talks about all the adequate means which are which are to be utilized for the implementation uh, of the framework so these are the four major goals on which it is working so if you if you come to the question guys now you have the two options in front of you so it says it is not legally binding yes sir be careful goals 2050 target 30 correct even first is correct answer is c very straight forward direct question medium level but something you could attempt because there is absolutely no trick it's a straight forward question on that the next question that we have is with respect to the ipbes what is ipbes guys it is intergovernmental science policy platform on biodiversity and ecosystem services and very careful it says which statement is not correct so first learn about then we'll come back to the question so talking about the ipbe uh, ipbes uh, it is an independent intergovernmental body that was established by united states uh, the main purpose of this uh, uh, framework of this independent body was to strengthen the science policies interface with respect to biodiversity and the ecosystem services this particular uh, arrangement is very old we we have done that in 2012 with 94 uh, you know governments participating into that as the name says it is independent intergovernmental body so this one message is clear that it is not a un body it is not a un body because it is independent but however un environment program provide secretariat services to this to do all their official work but still not a part of un body again in this case both statements are correct but you are supposed to figure out not correct so here answer is going to be d i mean i would say this question was a medium one uh, medium to tough for some people and uh, don't take a risk because i know it's purely fact based you absolutely have no scope of implementing the guess work so i think such tough questions you can skip if you have no idea because uh, there is no space for the guess work that we have next question is very interesting and it is something that you can solve with application of the common sense how you must have talked you must have heard about the non native species non native species are called the alien species so if there are two places a and place b and some of the vegetation or some kind of animals are translocated from a to b so for b everything every biodiversity coming from a is going to be considered as alien like non native right but very interestingly these alien species they have high survival rate than the native species they are alien sometimes they are going to have negative effect on the natural on the endemic species of b if that happens alien species becomes invasive species all alien are not invasive but all invasive are alien species understood all alien species need not to be invasive they become invasive only if they have negative impact on the endemic species but all invasive are alien species that is for sure the question says all these alien species how what is the reason that they survive quite well in even in extreme condition in those condition where the native vegetation fails to survive how these alien species survive see alien species survive for many many reasons and the reasons are in front of you why and how they are able to survive see they are very tough non native are tough and from the very beginning they are challenged with each and every aspect non native species they generally have a tendency 
of having rapid reproduction because they have to colonize they have to uh, get adjusted with the new area new conditions no so there is always a tendency of rapid reproduction and growth always to adapt quickly they have more adaptable behavior they have high tolerance for the disturbances because they have no choice but they have to be more tolerant so that uh, you know they can they can actually survive that new space or and because they have always there is a challenge from the native uh, vegetation so they are going to be more tolerant and again they are going to be resistant to the climate change also so they have they create their own new ecological niche uh, uh, you know and that makes them comparatively survive better if you compare the native species the original species of that place they are not really surviving long in extreme condition why because they have never been challenged they have never been outside their comfort zone they have a limited genetic, genetic diversity they don't really have co-evolved relationship with the surroundings because they were always in their comfort zones and with a slight slight disturbance in climate change the the survival of these native get really endangered they are also having competition from the alien which are way better than in surviving and of course due to habitat loss they are going to get uh, you know moved anytime so yeah in this case you have the option all the four are the reasons why uh, non native they survive better in extreme conditions answer is d now you can you can solve it with all the common sense why any sur uh, species would survive so you have the option in front of you question was tough but could have been attempted very easily because you know if you if you don't remember non native and you can simply replace the word alien in your in your head you are in a position to give the answer very straight forward next question is again very simple question it talks about the protected area what is a protected area the definition says everything itself protected area defined space managed through legal effective means ensuring long term conservation of nature ecosystem services yes and we have read it so many times the protected area includes everything national park wildlife sanctuaries conservation reserve community reserve marine protected areas so yes the answer is going to be c both are absolutely correct very easy question straight away you can attempt it simply definitions are being asked guys and that takes us to the last question which is question number 60 now this question is about uh, uh, consider the following statements about the desert storms aiding the carbon sequestration now this is a very interesting question how you think desert storm carrying lot of dust is going to help create a carbon sink in the near ocean what is a carbon sink carbon sequestration means i am going to capture my carbon and anything that captures the carbon becomes a carbon sink right now this is very interesting please uh, uh, search and look at for that so let's say um, the question says the desert storm help in carbon capture carbon sequestration in the arabian sea okay from where this desert is coming this desert is coming from the thar desert that we have in rajasthan okay if that is the case but how it is possible now very interestingly the dust particles that that are carried by the dust dust storms the dust particles are actually going to be to, to uh, you know ultimately going to settle down in the nearby oceans but these dust particles which are carried by the winds and thrown into the nearby oceans actually become a major source of minerals for the phytoplankton those tiny uh, organisms that survive in the ocean those phytoplankton then they grow though their biomass amount is very less like almost 1 to 2% of the global plant despite such very small biomass they are capable of fixing 40% of the total carbon emission all the three statements are actually sequentially telling you about how desert and the dust contribute to the development of phytoplankton which itself is going to become a carbon sink capturing sequestering the carbon at a 40% level so here all the three statements are correct answer is d in this case so here guys this question was a medium one but of course can be attempted very easily because you have the explanation in front of you 
all the three statements are connecting so perfectly you have this diagram in front of you and you can very easily understand the entire concept so that is that is all from my side in this particular video i hope you have enjoyed see you guys in the part number four soon don't forget to check out the test series the link is given in the uh, uh, in the description below and uh, what is exactly you enjoyed and learned from this video do let us know in the comment box and whatever is your favorite part whatever is your favorite concept uh, do tell us in the comment box so that we can learn about your taste as well so all my best wishes hope you have enjoyed learned a lot thank you so much take care god bless you jai hind and best wishes for your upcoming upsc exam 2024